Hi, I'm Amit Mukherjee. I'm the product manager for the AMD Media SDK. And today we're going to be talking about the AMFDM library. So what is AMFDM? AMD APUs and discrete GPUs uh, have a direct physical connection between the display controller and the video compression engine. So the video compression engine does H.264 encoding. And this capability is known as display encode mode. And this is actually ideal for use in low latency applications like wireless display and remote desktop. So in one shot, you can do a desktop, you can capture a desktop and you can compress it. The AMFDM library provides a C++ API to developers to use this functionality in their application. So now we're going to uh, step and take a look at some of the code uh, and you'll get a flavor of what it means to actually use DM in your application. And then we're going to actually run the application. So you will see uh, DM in action. Thank you. So let's get into a little detail about uh, AMF DM. So the physical connection that's made between the display controller and VCE is presented as an actual display to the Windows OS. And later on in the demo, I'm going to show you how that actually works in this application. And you can also configure the AMF DM, DM library to not only uh, produce compressed H.264 video streams, so you, your desktop is captured and compressed as H.264 elementary stream, but you can also capture the audio stream and, and you have an option to either take the elementary stream separately or you could also multiplex them into a transfer stream. So you have these options available in your AMF DM library. Now we are going to delve into, look at a sample application and delve into some source code. So you get a feel of the interface and how you can use uh, AMF DAM in your application. So for this purpose, we're going to look at the screen capture application in the media SDK 1.0 release. And I'm going to start with this file, uh, example config.cfg which is basically provides configuration information for the AMFDM library. So it has a bunch of parameters. I'm not going to go into each one of them, but it provides information like what type of usage you have. Are you trying to do a wireless display or a low latency? What kind of output you have, transport stream, elementary stream? And also you have, uh, you can configure the encoder, what kind of rate control you're using, what kind of bit rates, uh, what is the VBB buffer sizes, all those parameters you would like to configure the, uh, the VCE for. So you can basically set it in this file. So now let's take a look at uh, what the application uh, looks like and how this interface is used. So the first step in using the AMF library is to create the encoder object. And this is done through this method called AMF create encoder VCEDM. So this actually creates this encoder object. Okay, so after you've created the AMF uh, DM encoder object, the next step is you want to configure the physical connection between the display controller and VCE. And for that, there is a API called acquire remote display. So on the encoder object that we had created earlier, you invoke this method called acquire remote display. At this stage, you have uh, configured this virtual display. So if you, um, and later on you're going to see how that actually shows up on your windows, what properties you have. And now you can actually configure that display in, in different ways. You could clone this or you could extend the desktop. So for this example, we are going to clone the display. And the way to clone the display is through this method called uh, set display config. If you look in here, there's a set display config. This is a Windows API. And in here you uh, define the flag called SDC to underscore topology underscore clone. So when you invoke this API, it clones the virtual DM display as well as the physical display. So at this point, the displays are cloned. And the next step is you, you configure the video encoder if you look at the MA encoder object that we had created earlier, there is a method called set property. So the set property is used to configure all the uh, different parameters for the encoder, like bit rate, VBB buffer sizes, skipped pick period, slices per frame, all those different things which are defined 
in this example configuration, you can actually set using the set property method. And uh, once all the configuration is completed, you're ready to start encoding. And the encoding process is very straightforward. So if you look at this method called run, you do a enc start, which calls the start encoding method in the mencoder object. And then you run it in a loop. So in this particular example, we are running the config for 1000 frames and it will run in a loop and it will pull the compressed frames out with this call function called get next frame. This whole operation is asynchronous operation. So you're doing video capture and encode and this is being pushed to a queue and then you're using this method called get next frame m encoder to actually pull the compressed frame out there. And once you get that buffer, which could be a video elementary stream, transport stream, you can do anything you want with it. You can store it to a file, you could ship it over the network, you can do lots of processing with it. In this particular case, we are storing it in, into a file. So once we go through this loop, it's completed, we call encoder stop. So the actual encoding session stops here. And then we start tearing the whole thing down. The next step is we destroy the encoding session we had created. And then we also take down the uh, display connection, the remote display that we had created. And, and that's it. That's all that is needed uh, to use the display encode mode. Though. So there's a handful of uh, APIs, configures the uh, display controller and the VCE. You configure the encoder and clone the displays. And then uh, you run the whole process in a loop capture the frames, store it in a file, or push it over the network, and that's it. When you're done, you just close it out. Now, uh, we're going to do a demo. So you'll see the AMFDM in action. There is this configuration file in here. So this is my desktop. It's got 1920 by 1080 resolution. I'm going to be capturing 1,000 frames here, and uh, I'm going to use it in, in low latency mode, and I'm going to get uh, ele elementary video streams here. So let's uh, start this sample and you'll see a brief flicker. And th at this point, you should be able to see the dual displays. So you see there are, there are clone displays, there are multiple, you see uh, Windows thinks that there are multiple monitors. So the second monitor is actually the virtual display that is created by VCEDEM. So this elementary stream in H.264 elementary, elementary stream that's captured here, we're going to play it back using FF Play, and, uh, and that's it. That's what we did. It captured all the things, all my activities that I did on the desktop, and uh, that's available now. So let's just do a quick recap of what we learned today. So AMD uh, APUs and discrete GPUs have a direct connection between the display controller and the video compression engine. And this capability is called display encode mode. This is uh, really ideal for usage in low latency applications like wireless display and remote desktop. So you can do a capture and video and compress the video in one shot. So uh, the media SDK provides the AMFDM library, which gives you a C++ API to leverage this functionality in your application. So have fun using the uh, AMFDM library in your application. And uh, uh, for any questions or feedback, please uh, go to our Media SDK forum, and uh, we'll be glad to answer your questions there. Thank you very much.